We continue to learn more about the man accused of attempting to assassinate former President Trump over the weekend as he golfed in West Palm Beach, Florida. Ryan Ruth has a lengthy criminal history in North Carolina spanning the 1980s to 2010, including charges of uh, writing bad checks to possession of weapons of mass destruction. Ruth tried to recruit fighters for Ukraine to defend itself against Russia, and last year, in his self-published book, Ukraine's Unwinnable War, he described Trump as a, quote, fool and a buffoon and urged Iran to assassinate the former president. A few reporters interviewed Ruth over the last couple years as he pushed his support of Ukraine. Among those was Thomas Gibbons Neff. He is a national correspondent for The New York Times and does join us now live to discuss more on that. Thomas, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us this morning. Yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Well, first off, I do kind of want to start at the beginning here. Can you explain to me why you were interviewing Ryan Ruth and and what you thought of him overall? Sure. Yeah. So we were working on a story about uh, foreign fighters and volunteers in Ukraine. Um, and I think this was I think the winter of 2023. And a colleague of mine and friend, Najim Rahim, uh, works out of the Kabul Bureau uh, before the collapse of the government there. And he had a friend and source in Iran, a uh, former Afghan special operations soldier with the KKA, one of the more elite Afghan units. And he was in touch with, with Ryan Ruth um, because through an intermediary said he was trying to get Afghans to Ukraine. So he became kind of the point person for um, you know hundreds, I think maybe more than a thousand Afghans all trying to get to Ukraine. What was his demeanor? What was the conversation like as you were speaking with him? Yeah, as we put together this story, there were a lot of interesting characters, and uh, Mr. Ruth kind of was just another one of those. He was, you know, he had a southern drawl, and and he was very eager to talk about his story um, and talk about the efforts he was um, taking to to get these Afghans to Ukraine. Uh, but at the same time, a lot of the things he said was just a little off the mark. I mean, you know, some way off the mark as far as what he was planning to do to get Afghans out of Iran or Pakistan or Afghanistan, whether that's, you know, hiring U.S. military transport aircraft or forging passports or whatever it took. He, uh, he It definitely sounded like he existed in a reality that I could see, but definitely wasn't a part of. Did he express overall why he was so focused on Ukraine and the war itself? I mean, he, he said very little, you know, he, he, he was like, well, you know, I'm a construction worker. I, I have no military experience. I came to, to help and they didn't need me on the front line. So I'm doing this. And, you know, honestly, he, he, he kind of just um, checked all the boxes for, for these people at the beginning of, of Russia's big, you know, Russia's invasion of Ukraine in 22 of you know, people who just showed up to reinvent themselves or make a name for themselves or or basically just change the arc of their life by getting invested in this this big cause. And I, I think you can't really underestimate how much that takes on some people, especially, you know, someone I think is listless as him. Did you ever have a, a follow up conversation or call with him after that initial contact? We texted, I mean, after I found out he was accused of attempting to assassinate uh, former President Trump, uh, I looked at, you know, texts, uh, WhatsApp and Signal, and, and he had sent some screenshots or um, or said he was meeting in Washington with people, um, but it was all pretty, you know, non, yeah, non-interesting. Did you recognize the name, the photos, that sort of thing when he was taken into custody over the weekend for the incident at Trump International Golf Club? Did the name ring a bell? Yeah, I, th I think a colleague of mine called because I had just seen the alerts and he, he brought up Ryan Ruth. And he was like, I think that you talk I, you talked to this guy. And I was like, uh, and then, you know, kind of looked in the back of my head. I'm like, yeah, I, I definitely did. And that's probably him. You yeah, know, it kind of all, you know, it was sad to hear, but weirdly not that surprising. My last question here, when you realized that it was the same man that you did interview, what what were you thinking at that point? No, I, 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 I felt that, you know, I think you look at um, 
United States involvement with the uh, with the war in Ukraine or Russians invasion of Ukraine and and you know, the United States has sent a lot of money and and aid but uh you know no ground troops and this was just kind of a weird mutation of of the war coming back in one way or another all right, Thomas Gibbons Neff, thank you so much for taking the time to join us here and provide a little context to uh, the situation. Is there anything else that you want to add about anything before I let you go? No, no, I think I think that covered it. And uh, thanks for having me on. All right. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good rest of your day. Take care, you too.